Hey guys, it's Courtney here from SUV Campers and today I want to take you on a tour of the SUV Teletrack. First thing I'm going to do is throw over to our friend Bo is going to show you how easily these camper trailers open. Jeff is going to show you how easily they close. Take it away boys. Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to quickly simply open a, a Ford Fall camper trailer. It's as easy as this guys. So what you do is you come to the front, you disengage your winch, you can have that in the neutral position. And then basically you walk around to the back of your camper trailer. You've got four catches on your camper trailer. You've got two at the back and two on each side, one on each side. So basically all you do is release a corner catch on each side first. They're your safety ones. And then basically I'll put my elbow on the corner of the camper and I'll release the first camp latch on this side here. All I'm doing is just holding a bit of weight down here to let the latch take a bit of weight off the latch. And then I'll come to this side here. I'll do the same. I'll put my elbow on the corner. I'll just take the weight off the latch, lift that off and just let the camper lid go. By doing that, it just makes the lid go up a lot easier. Now, I'll then come to the front. All you do is just, you can basically two fingers, just wind that lid straight over. It'll just wind over as easy as that. So as quick as you wind it, as quick as it'll open up, it doesn't get any easier than this. I'll wind him all the way down. As I get to the end there, I'll just engage the, the ratchet. That'll hold the lid down. I'll then come around to the side of the camper. And depending on the model, you've just got some latches on the side here that just locks it in place so it doesn't flip back up. Uh, I'll go to the corner of the camper. The canvas has got these nice little pieces that come around like that and just locks that whole corner in really nice and neat. I'll then come over, I'll open the main entry door. I'll come inside. It's as simple as basically going inside here, pushing the back bow up. It automatically locks into place and that's as easy as it is guys. Easy camper trailer open. I'm just going to show you how easy it is to pull down a four berth camper trailer. So open the door, walk into your camper trailer, simply let it off the locking pin on both sides. Very important to make sure from now that you close your door and flick your deadlock across from the inside so the door is closed. Then it's a matter of letting the winch cable off the front, releasing your lid and then with the twin struts it goes over very simple. Now when you get to here, first lot of canvas, it certainly makes it a lot more simple to put it in. And all I do is fold this canvas so it goes layer up on layer. It'll fold up a lot better. And it's exactly the same around the other side. So the first lot of canvas just goes in across the top of the bed so there's heaps of spare room in there. When you get to here, some people either have a horse lead or a dog lead rope hanging down and they just pull down on, on that to close the camper trailer. All I do is grab the side, pull this down. By having that front window open, it expresses the air out of the back. And then all you need to do is winch cable onto that bottom eyelet and then the winch pulls the rest down. So when you're winding this down, very simple on the winch. The first place I stop to do a tuck in is when the winch cable itself hits these middle ribs and that's where you do your first tuck in from. So push it all over towards the center. And the same around this side. Then just down on your winch cable again. Until the winch cable is hitting this front rib of the camper trailer. And that's where you do your final tuck in of all your canvas. Once you've got all the canvas inside, you can either winch it down a little bit more from the front or just pull it down until you have you get your over centre latch on here. Use that as a lever. 
to put the back one on and simply pull down both the levers at the same time. Now the reason SUV campers are so quick and so easy to open is because of these double gas struts here. So this assists with the opening and closing of the camper trailer. Alrighty, now the lid of SUV campers actually has a double rubber automotive seal around it. So you can see one seal there and then a second one at the back here. Now the reason we put two seals on is actually as an added method of dust and water protection. So when you're traveling along, the camper's bouncing around, you're four wheel driving, it might be flexing a little bit, one of the seals may lift and this is where the other seal will come into play. So if one of the seals lifts, you've still got a backup seal there to stop any dust and water from getting inside the camper. Now the tropical roof on SUV campers is that little bit that you can see above the main roof of the camper there. It's made out of the same canvas as the trailer itself. So it's a 16 ounce canvas and there's no need to manually extend that pole. So the tropical roof just opens and closes with the camper trailer as normal. There's nothing more you need to do. Now, all the external doors on SUV campers are flush mounted for improved weatherproofing. So that means that when it rains, 90% of the water is just going to run straight off of the side of the camper and the rubber seals inside only have to catch that 10%. One of the top features about SUV campers is the Australian design swing door and steps. Now other companies actually bolt the steps to the back of the door so the door drops down and then you walk up your steps to get inside. But with the SUVs all you do is open your door, climb up inside and shut the door behind you. There's also a deadlock on the inside and it locks with a key as well. At the front of the tele truck, you have two four and a half kilo gas bottle holders, three 20 litre jerry can holders, the aluminium checker plated stone guard, as well as the winch for opening and closing the camper, and the standard poly block hitch. At the rear of the tele truck, you have one spare tyre and one aluminium storage box. On the door directly opposite the pantry, you'll see the positive pressure system. So what this is, it's a 12 volt fan with a filter in it. So when you're traveling along the dirt roads, all you do is push this button here to turn it on. It'll push positive air throughout the camper trailer so no dust gets in. Alrighty guys, so I'm gonna throw back over to Joe. He's going to explain a little bit more about the suspension on the camper trailers. Off you go, Joe. Welcome to SUV Campers. Uh, today I just wanna quickly go through guys and show you independent suspension on an SUV camper, how it's assembled and what goes into assembling an SUV camper. Uh, underneath, this is really important for, for the you guys that want to get out in the bush and want to make it there and back without having any trouble. Um, we sort of take it to the next level, we think, when it comes to putting a suspension in a camper trail and making sure it's going to stay in there. Um, with the new suspension arms we've got out at the present time, the Series 4 suspension arms, we've got Series 3, Series 2 and the original suspension arms out there, all going gangbusters. This one here in particular is a Series 4. You can see it's all been reinforced along the sides of the suspension arms. These are all 6mm thick suspension arm box section around here. They're all 6mm wall thickness. You've got 16mm wall thickness steel, steel collar tubes on the end here. And then your nylon bushes go, your nylon 6 bushes go inside that again with a crush tube. So from here, once that suspension arm's actually fitted in your camper trailer like this with your coil and your shockies, everything, all your bolts, nuts are always locked tight in here. We don't leave anything to chance, so we make sure everything's locked tight on it if it's getting bolted together. From here, you've got your complete hub and stub assembly, which is this. That's your bolt-on stub that's actually fitted inside your hub and your brake assembly. Every camper trailer that SUV camper trailer puts out at the present time has the option to carry a spare stub, uh, and which is one of these. This can be carried uh, on your camper trailer, we've actually got a space on every trailer now that you can actually bolt this on with a spare set of bolts. So if you ever did get into trouble and something drastically went wrong, you hit a culvert or you hit a cliff or whatever, um, and you did do some damage to your suspension, one of the main key points that you don't want happening is your stub breaking off here, which I've, I've never seen one of these break off, but it can possibly happen, uh, or you damage this thread. So once you damage that thread, if you're in the middle of the sticks and you have got nothing to fix that, um, this is where your spare stub comes into handy. So you've got the ability to carry the, one of these on board if you're going up to the top where there's no services available uh, to get yourself out of trouble. Uh, it's definitely a good piece of gear to have on board. Uh, but you can see with the amount of work we put into our camper trailers and, and what we do here, we don't take chances with this sort of gear. Uh, once they bolt that stub onto there, uh, it's wheel aligned. But again, everything's lock uh, Your wheel nuts are torqued to the right, correct pressures for the trailer. Uh, and basically from there you're ready to go. But um, with SUV campers, we don't leave it the chance.
That was awesome. Thanks so much, Joe. Now, SUV campers pride themselves on using what's called a true tear weight system. Now, that means that when we take our camper trailers over the way bridge, we make sure that the mattresses are in them, the couches, all the annexes, walls, uh, poles, everything like that is in it. So we can give you the most accurate tear weight possible. Alrighty guys, so this is your pantry. Now before I go into too much detail about all of this, I wanna show you the support legs. Now these actually magnetically attach to the front box here. So you can see magnetically attaches. So all you do, pull them down, onto the ground and then adjust them to the height you need them to go to. Now the support legs are designed to support the weight of anything that's in the pantry. They're also going to stabilize it. So if you lean on it or anything like that, it's not going to drop because you've got those legs there holding it. In place, you've also got this little latch here just behind your pantry. Now what that does is it actually locks your pantry in place. So if someone was to lean on your pantry, it won't slide back in. Or if you're parked on a bit of a hill, anything like that, it'll stop the pantry from sliding back inside the compartment. All right, let's get into the storage on this thing. Now, the first thing you've got is this box here. Now, it folds up and over like that, so you can use it for storage of your bulkier items like tins of spaghetti, taller items. You have one small compartment here, and then down the back here, you have a compartment that's actually quite deep. So you could put your frying pans and stuff like that in there. You also have this bench space here as well. So it does create a little bit of extra bench space. In the front here, you also have a little drawer. So you can pull that out and you can store some stuff in there as well. Next to that, you have these three carpeted drawers. So they just pull out. You can store whatever you want to in those, but they are carpeted, so you can put things like plates and cups in there if you don't have anywhere else to store them. At the back here, you have the capacity to put up to a 95 litre Evercool fridge freezer, which is what we've got in here at the moment, and you can purchase them as an additional extra if you wanted to. And then around the other side, you can see we've got the fold down bench as well. So you can use that for prepping, plating, uh, or eating off of if you wanted to. Now this is that bench I was talking about. When you pack your pantry away, all you do is fold it back up and there's these little over center catches, one at this end, one at the far end, and you just lock them in and slide it away. Moving on to the kitchen now, and I'll start by showing you this extended bench space. Now, the extended bench space is perfect for plating, prepping, uh, just giving yourself a little bit of extra space to get your stuff done when you're cooking. You've got a four burner gas stove here, all AGA approved. Directly below that, fully lined cutlery drawer, so you can keep that stocked at all times with your knives, forks, everything like that. You've got your stainless steel dish rack as well, so once you've done your dishes, you can put them up there to dry. Sink and sink access underneath here so you can store your hoses and stuff like that. Now, that sink is hot and cold water as well. So if you purchase your hot water system as an additional extra, you can hook it up so that you get hot and cold water out of the sink. All right, so I'm gonna bring you in for a bit of a closer look at the stove. It is all AGA approved, and you can see we've got these foam covers over the burners. It's just a bit of protection for them. Every burner also has its own automatic ignition. Now, the way to ignite it, you just pick the burner that you wanna use. You just push down, you'll hear the click, 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 just like a gas stove at home. Give it a quarter of a turn anti-clockwise, and that will ignite your flame. Now, that is the highest point of the flame, so if you want a low flame, just keep turning anti-clockwise till you get the flame that you want. Same thing if you want to go higher just turn clockwise until you get to where you want it to go now every burner also has a flame safe on it so what the flame safe does is it protects you if the flame gets blown out for any reason once you're done cooking though just give it a quarter of a turn uh, clockwise and that will turn the flame off now you can see it is quite a big stove and the reason we do that is because we want you to be able to cook pretty much anything when you go away camping. Now one of the best things about camping is going fishing, going crabbing, everything like that. So we put the big stove in there so that if you do go crabbing and you wanna boil those crabs up for dinner, you can put your pot on, you can boil your water nice and easily, put your crabs in and have your delicious seafood Good dinner. Campers. Today we're just gonna give you a bit of a run through on this fantastic new air annex and uh, how to set it up and how to put it on. So the air annex comes in two bags. The first bag has the whole air annex assembly and the second bag has all the sidewall pieces, 
draft skirt, flooring, touring awning that goes on that lower flap, and it's even got a manual hand pump for the kids. In today's lesson, we are gonna be using the electric pump. Plug it in, push a button, away you go. So setting up the air annex, best thing is just lay it out on the ground first so it's flat and you know you've got it on the right way. And then all it does is the zip and Velcro attaches this end first. So once you've attached the zip and it's just a matter of pulling this cord and the zip and the Velcro attach. Drop the center pole down here so you can each it, reach a lot easier and then up over the apex. And then just tie it off on this very end. Okay, so from here, once you've got it zipped on, just make sure you've got your valve stem screwed in. And, and firm, undo the outer cap, and that's where your electric pump plugs into. They plug that into there, and then make sure your dial is on seven PSI on the pump, and it's on the red outlet, which is pump, and plugged into the Anderson plug on the drawbar. Push the on button, and uh, stand back and watch you do its magic. That is what I call camping. So once it starts getting a little bit of structure to it, all I do is pop it up in semi-right position then it's not kinked and the posts will go up easier, making sure again that you've got all your valves closed across the front. And then sit there and watch it go up and uh, get back to your beer. So as long as you've got it set on 7 PSI on the gauge, it will automatically stop once these are fully inflated. And 7 PSI is uh, pretty tight and it's not going to move around. Once you've got that set up and the pump stops, then you just walk back in and pop up the center roof piece. So once you've pegged down the front pods so they don't creep out, you can put up all the sidewall pieces if you like. So that's the other bag. So each individual one has its own sidewall piece. There's another one that goes here. Then you've got a draft skirt and then also a flooring sheet. So you can totally enclose it for those wet weekends away. Hi, it's Jeff from SUV Camper Trailers here, just showing you the new air shower tent and how it connects. So just simply zips across the back section here and connects to the Velcro. And then these are your air pods that you're gonna fill up with through the air intake. So your 12 volt air annex pump that connects to your shower, plug it into your Anderson plug, seven PSI on your pump, plug it into one of the intake ports, and then hit start. That's it. Okay. So hints and tips for the new air shower tent. Make sure that you've got both your valves closed so you don't leak any air. If one of the pods is not going up effectively, make sure that you've got your interconnecting valves open so it can run air from this pod into that pod. Anchor down the uh, base of your shower tent so it doesn't move around. And also make sure you've got your window up. So inside you can see we've got a queen size inner spring mattress. It has got those straps over the bed so that you can make the bed and not have to unmake it every time you go to pack the camper up. You've got two LED dimmers over the bed as well.
Got two over the couch here as well. Now they are controlled by the little dimmer switch, which is the white box you can see at the bottom of the screen. And to turn it up, all you do is go up and you see they can get quite bright. Then back down again, you can actually turn them off from here and then back on again. Inside you've got these two internal storage drawers. So they just come out like that and you can use that for clothes and towels and things like that. Alrighty guys, I wanna show you one of the coolest parts about SUV campers and that is the reverse cycle air conditioning. Now reverse cycle air conditioning is an option on every single one of the SUV campers. Now you can see you've got three aircon vents here. So you've got one back here and then you've got two and three. Now these hoses are completely adjustable. So you can just pull them out and point them in whatever direction you want them to go. So you can point them at the bed, up under the covers, you can point them at the couch if you're just sitting there relaxing, or if it's a hot day and you've just finished setting up, you can even come in and just point it straight at your face. Like it's that easy. Now the best part about it is it's reverse cycle. So it is- starting. Now this is your luxury vinyl club lounge seating that actually converts down to a bed. Uh, the next part of this video is going to show you exactly how that's done, so stay tuned going to do today is we're going to turn this luxury club lounge into a double bed now the way you do that is by using the couch backs here so all you do is you stand up grab your couch back like so lay it across the middle here and repeat so you move your corner piece grab your back cushion and lay it in the middle here. And last but not least, you grab this one near the side door here. Lay it across the middle. And that's it, that's all it takes, guys. Now you're probably wondering what supports the weight when you're sleeping on this bed, and the answer lies in these cushions themselves. They have a board that runs through the middle of them that supports the weight of anyone that sleeps on it. Now the roofs on SUV campers are quite high. This is to allow the hot air to escape easier. I personally am a little bit over five foot nine and I can only just touch the roof of the camper on my tippy toes. So that just shows you how high the roofs actually are. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions about the SUV Grand Mega or anything else in the SUV range, head to www.suvcampers.com.au or call 1300 3 to find your nearest SUV dealer. Don't forget to ask them about the incredible specials we've got running at the moment, but otherwise I'll see you in the next video.